Welcome to the good, the bad, and the sequel with your hosts, Doug and Jamie. We are back, and this is the movie podcast where we're talking sequels and we do it in two parts. The first, a discussion of the sequel, what they got right, what they got wrong, and how it could have been better. And the second, an interview with an actor, someone that's involved that made the film worth watching. I really hope you enjoyed last week's interview, which we actually did it beforehand because we had the viral sensation because of bread and milk, the coffee videos, Vic DiBattetto. So he had a bunch of great shows lined up. So I want to make sure I could plug the best to be able to get as many people to go see him. And I know he sold out both shows this weekend. Thanks again, Vic, for taking the time. And that movie, of course, is Paul Blart 2. And before we dive into the movie, I'm going to introduce you to my partner in the sequel watching journey, Jamie Riccardi. Jamie, how you doing? I'm doing awesome, Doug. Thanks. So, Jamie, I know you love Kevin James. We worked together. You would bring in King of Queens. We watched it a bunch. And this guy crushes in the box office. He can make any movie and just make a ton of money. So, uh, did you see? You, did you like the first one? Um, yes, I did like the first one, and, and I am a Kevin James fan. I've actually seen him three times in stand up. Um, love King of Queens. Um, and I did like the first one. Uh, again, I think if you're a Kevin James fan, you're going to enjoy it. Is it silly? It is. Is the second one more silly than the first one? It is. Um, this was a, an, another interesting movie to, to watch. All right, great. So, uh, so let's go, uh, let's get right into it. First of all, I, I, Paul Plart, his comparison when you think about like life, he's Charlie Brown. You got to get shit out all the time. Just think of the beginning of the movie. You rarely see this in movies, right? The sequel? Well, I, it's like, you forget gonna, about the first one. Yeah. I was going to say, when you think of a funny movie, I think about like dying by getting hit by a car and divorce, like within five minutes of a movie. I find that very funny. So, yes. Were you going that level of, of what you don't see or are you? I was thinking more of the actress who played his wife wasn't available or she wanted too much money. So like, oh, we got to write her off. And uh, they just wanted to go with Bachelor Bart, which, hey, Bachelor Bart, there were some good parts to it. And there's parts we're going to get to later that I really respect Kevin James versus some other actors out there that are big, big actors that have to write in. When you, say, when you say big actors, do you mean like size or are you talking about big? Because I mean, Kevin James is a big actor. Or are you talking about like just like a Tom Cruise? Notoriety. Notoriety. Okay. okay. We don't single out heavy set people or larger people. I don't know what phrase I could say. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. So why did they kill his mom? Why did they? I understand he was going to Vegas, so she wasn't going to be in it anyway. But what did they think? Like if she was still in it? that he wouldn't have went to Vegas? Yeah, you know, that didn't make sense at all because, I mean, he, uh, you know, again, he, it was right after the divorce, you know, which he was married for six days, and he got married at the mall. I don't know if you picked that up, you know. I did not, but that's yes. So terrible. he got he got married at the mall because I showed at you a clip. At the West Orange Pavilion, which at is the West not Orange. real. Correct. I, had, I actually had a question that because I'm like, I've been to West Orange many times, never seen a mall that, you know, there, so... Yeah, so he got married at the mall, got divorced six days later. Um, his, his mother wasn't really a big factor in, in the movie. So, like, why, like, crap on him more than he's already been crapped on? You know, like, I, yeah, it didn't make sense at all. It didn't. That was weird. And, yeah, I, I think it was and, the and, whole Charlie Brown thing. Like, everything bad happens to him. Okay, and you know what? I'm fine. You're going to kill her? Why do I have a heart attack? You're going to get her smashed by a bus? I mean, like, that, that's like, she died violently. You know, it wasn't like even like, you know, she died or a lot of times in comedies, you know, she'll die off screen. Like, oh, you know, mom just passed away, whatever. No, you see her get smashed by a bus. <laughs> uh, and then after that, he is working in the mall again. He's like in his roots. And this is like kind of an awkward part. They had like that mom that was very attractive that he finds this kid all by himself. who's probably like 10 or 11, brings it back to the mom. And then the mom was like insistent that her son hug this stranger. Yeah, I wrote that down. I mean, I'm a father of two kids. Um, I find that awkward. <laughs> I mean, my kids sometimes when they were younger, they didn't want to hug family, let alone, you know, a stranger in a mall, you know, um, that was bizarre. And she was like insistent on it, like nonstop. 
It's kind of awkward. I can understand if he was going to get digits or something. Maybe go for it. But no, not to to pimp your kid out like that, that was... And he felt, you could see Kevin James, uh, Paul Blart felt awkward about it also. Like He's like, no, nah, no, it's okay. He doesn't have to do it. And the mom we kept pushing for it. She wanted that picture of him hugging the, the mall cop. <laughs> so then Blart, this is how you tell how like Charlie Brown very simply is. His daughter tells him that they have leftover baked ziti. And he's just as excited about that as his invite to the National Security Guard Conference. In yes, Vegas, and food was a big part of the first movie. Also, I mean, he was all always excited about food. Um, his daughter, you know, is his, her brother is the kid on uh, Modern Family. They look exactly like she. Well, I think I don't know what kind of look they were going for her because she's she's probably what sixteen, seventeen in the movie. Oh no, no, no she's eighteen. She's going to college. Yeah. Next year. she looked very farty. Like she looked very farty. And her, we'll get to it, but her bathing suit later on had these like flower le- flowers, and you know her hair was like permed all way. Like you know, I just, she looked like they really like almost made her maybe because it's he's you know she's a single child, and you got Kevin James who's a loser himself, and he doesn't have a I don't know. I I, th- I just thought she they made her really like farty. Side note, I don't know how I was on uh, who's IMDb just looking for actors that we reach out to. But uh, there was a movie with Manny, her her real life brother that I just found out about from you, <laughs> and it's a movie about what's his name? Oh my god, dude, who's the badass guy, Spanish guy? How did this get made? He was in the episode, uh, dude. Oh, oh, uh, the prison. About, yeah, we're talking about uh, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo plays a babysitter who who is this, like his real life, like a former prisoner, and he. Has to babysit Manny and Manny takes over. Never even heard of it. I don't know where I found it. I think we're. I was Is there a sequel? It was not a sequel. Uh, I, I think I was looking for interviews for uh, uh, Tooth Fairy 2 or one of those. But anyway, so yeah, so this cast is awesome. Lonnie Love, who's hilarious. Like, dude, she was great at all the. I love the 70s. I love the 80s. I love the 90s. You have awesome. his brother or cousin in real life. Yep. You have Nikki Totoro. He was in the first one too, I think. His brother, oh, was he? I think so. Different character. Oh though, but... yeah, he was doing karaoke yes. and he pushed out the window. Yes, he was doing Bruce. Yeah, you have Vic DiPetetto, who I interviewed last week, who hilarious. And let me tell you, he again, he did a great job too. I mean, you know, like I know he's not, he doesn't, he hasn't done a lot of movies, but you know, he played that Italian role. I mean, wearing up until wearing the guinea tea was, you know, great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, who else is in it? There was somebody else. Well, the the other the uh, there was there was someone else. I know you're talking about. Oh, the first of all, the bad guy. He was in. Oh, uh, he's a bad guy in everything. Every movie, he's a bad guy, and he plays a good bad guy. Oh, dude, so, he's yeah. a great bad guy. And then he he so Blard, they get to the hotel, the Wind Casino, which again, when it comes to this whole Wind Casino thing, we get it. It's at the Wind Casino. It was supposed to be at like the Mall of America. Side note. Right. They were going to do it there. And then they reached out when Charles Wynn, who owns the casino, was like, hey, you can do it here. God damn, if you didn't see Wynn Casino a million times, even the gift later in the movie that the girl yeah. that was the guy that was into her says, hey, I got you the snow globe that says Wynn Casino on it. And then Charles wins at the end of the movie, which I know we'll mention again. But yeah, so he, he goes in there and he goes, do you have my suite available? Do you make sure you have my bottomless, bottomless bowl of peanut M&M's? Yeah, it, it, well, I think that guy is an actor, a uh, famous actor too. The one behind the. Oh yeah, he was. He's on uh, Superstore. Okay, because I knew I, I knew I've seen before. He was pretty funny too. Oh um, yeah, no, he was great. Can and I'm curious. Now he's going to Las Vegas. He looks like a tourist that you would see in any like the Far Side or any like postcard of a typical Hawaiian wear shorts, short shorts, high socks. Like he's going to Vegas. He's not going to Florida. Like did he? I, I feel like he did not dress appropriately for Vegas. No, he. I don't think he was ready to go. I think that's all they had at the West. Uh, that's all. That's all was on clearance at the West Orange <laughs> Pavilion. And he does wear a Hawaiian shirt the entire movie. So you know, until he gets dressed as the mall cop, you know. So Blart asked about the ballroom, and he's like thinking the security conference. He's like, you know, the, the you know the National Security Guard conference, and they go, oh, uh, Minnie Kisses playing there. 
Mini kiss. Dude. I bet you. Oh my god, what the First hell? of all, is, is that a real is that a real thing though? I, I, it's hope, gotta be, I right? hope so. It's gotta be. Gene Simmons is probably watching that movie, uh, trying to sue them with all of his lawyers, of trying course. to figure out like what he can get out of it. No, but I thought that was pretty funny, and I'm like, oh, dude, I hope that comes back. You know, I, I also noticed he did some of his routine from his stand up into. Oh, the movie. really? So I've seen his stand up before. You ever see "Don't Sweat the Small Stuff"? Okay, so he's got a skit where he goes to an airport. He's got all these bags of suitcases, you know, wrapped around his neck, and put. And he walks like two feet, puts them all down. Then he picks them up again, walks two feet, and he did it at the hotel. Do you remember? He had like all these yeah, yeah. bags. He put it down. He walked two feet, put them back up. Um, and yeah, he, he got that from his stand-up. Oh, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> so so you're a healthy guy, right? You work out. Sure. Now, in your days, if you ever talk to like a uh, nutritionist and they were like, hey, Jamie, you want to lose weight? Here's a vibrating fork. Would that be something that you'd be working with, or is that a Weight Watchers thing? Well, I mean, I use it. Use, I, I have one. I use it like three times a week. So they, yeah, they do work. Um, I've never even heard of that. I don't know if it's real. I I gotta imagine it's not. I had um, a buddy. His wife used a vibrating fork, and now they're getting divorced. But um, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you know that was kind of weird. Um. I, I I can't imagine why that would work. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was kind of weird. Um, but you know what? It, obviously, it's not working because he's still pretty fat. So. Oh, I know. No, he just keeps eating. And I love the interaction between him and the hotel manager. Like, Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, even before that, I, and I mentioned this when I forgot to mention this. So it's him and his daughter traveling. Did you see how many bags they were traveling with? It was a lot, and I think it was only like a two-day trip. It was about seven bags. Yeah. And it's him and his daughter. So unless he had like sandwiches in some of the bags or something, um, I thought that was a little ridiculous. But, yeah. Anyway, yes, his <laughs> interaction with the, uh, the manager was, was unbelievable. It, I, I didn't expect it to go the direction it went in. I know. That's why, again, Kevin Smith – Will you ever listen to this? I don't know, but I respect you because there's so many, even like his buddy, like I love Adam Sandler. Who doesn't? There's so many actors that write these movies. They're like, you know what? I want to kiss Drew Barrymore. or I want to kiss this. or I want to kiss that. Spoiler alert. It's like, dude, he could have, in the storyline, you are talking about a twist, like an M. Night Shyamalan twist. hundred yeah, percent. Oh yeah, dude. So yeah, no, she's obviously gorgeous. If you've seen the movie, her name is Danielle Alonzo and just the interaction between them were so funny. Well, I think, you know, again, I think we have to explain, you know, because if, if, in case you have not seen the movie, you know, they're having a, the first interaction, I guess he was complaining. So she came over with a better room to give him and she's an attractive woman. And right, he's kind of stops her mid sentence. Cause he thinks that she's flirting with him. Yeah, and she's and she's like dumbfounded. She's like making a face, like, "No, I'm not at all." He goes, "No, no, please. I've been through this. I know what flirting is. I know when women look at me. Like, you know, he's going on this whole thing. And at this moment, you're thinking, like, this guy's a real loser. Like, he has a moment. Like, he just sounds. And the daughter looks embarrassed. Like, the daughter's telling him, "No, no, she's not thinking that." Um, and this interaction happens about three more times throughout the movie. And they're all great. The best. All great. The the lip. Oh. Okay, honey, the li- your lip sweating. I'm actually seeing someone. Oh, uh, I invented the imaginary girlfriend. Right. Like, dude, every time. And the best is she was like flustered. He tried to tip her. Yep. Like when she brought it to suit later on. But now let's go into so get into the room. The daughter goes, you know what? I want to go to the pool. Like you mentioned, she's wearing that old timey bathing suit. Yep. And he goes, Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where do you think you're going? It's like, dude, your daughter's covering everything up. She's, <laughs> She's not showing anything. Now I'm watching this with my daughter and she's le- turning to me and look at me because I am the same way with her, but she's not wearing an old timey bathing suit. You know, she'll throw on a bikini or something. And I'm like, all right, let, you know, let's reevaluate the situation here. You know, she, I don't think she could have been any more covered up than what she was wearing. So for him to even be freaked out about that was kind of uh, kind of weird. No, it was so weird. But you know what? It led to a great scene when he goes down to the casino. He walks up to a table where somebody is on fire playing craps. And he says, what's the hoopla, friend? 
He's from New Jersey or New York. He's from the area, and he talks like he's from the Midwest. He look, and he looks like he's never seen any kind of gambling ever. Oh, you no. know, I, I've never played craps. I, I really don't have the full concept, but I understand gambling. He lo- he walks up there like he's from another planet, looking at gambling for the first time, and just throwing his money around like left and right. Um, and he doesn't make a lot of money. It's a mall cop. Let's get be serious. I mean, you know, no offense to any mall cops out there, but I don't think you're pulling in three figures. You know, and he's throwing his money around like like it's three nothing. wait three figures. <laughs> well, I hope they make more than nine hundred ninety nine dollars. So he's probably making three figures. <laughs> Here you go, three figures a year. Thank you, sir. All right, scratch that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But yeah, that, that was a great scene, though, because every time the guy kept mentioning something, he kept putting down another 50 or whatever. I know. Whatever. Oh, yeah, he's like, yeah, you want to put it on the runner? You want to? Put it? I don't think those are real phrases, so I don't know if that's like a real thing because he made him bet all of his money, and he had like the side pocket thing. Yep. He had like the – oh, God. And so then, there were – Oh, no, they, and then and obviously the, the guy that was on fire loses. Oh, yeah. And then they're like, oh, thanks a lot, fat guy. That, that, that's what one, one guy said. <laughs> as soon as he, he ruined the heater. And so then we're introduced to, uh, we mentioned before, Gary Valentine, who plays Saul Gunderbuck. And then we meet Nikki Totoro, who plays a hot shot mall cop. Is that a real thing? I don't know. He's like the Iceman of all cops. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's the he's the, yeah, he's like the, the the cool ball cop, which you don't expect because if you again, if you look at all the other guys, he he was definitely like their leader. Like he was he was awesome. He, he, his train, it, the way they describe his training and everything else, like he was like he was the the the, the what is it the born identity? He, like he was like <laughs> the guy. And I loved him. He was the I, keynote speaker. He was. And I didn't, I didn't realize that was a Toro. I totally I, – I knew I recognized him, and I didn't realize that was uh, a Totoro. That's Nikki, the better actor in some light. I'm just kidding, John. So, no, and then we meet his buddy Gino, who's played by Vic DiBattetto. And, yeah, so it's so funny. All he talks about, he goes, hey, you know what? You know how to ride one of those things, right? When he's looking at the Segway. And then, dude, when Blart is showing off on that Segway, he's acting so cool. He's trying to, like, go back and forth. He backs up. And then he almost gets hit by a car backing up. And then, of course, he gets hit by a car. But the thing I have to say is, did he have to pay for that? He damaged. Like, those things have to be expensive. They're very expensive. But I I also want to know is I've never seen a Segway in a mall ever. And I've been to a lot of malls. Like, is that something that's common? I've never seen one. The only time I ever saw one was at Rowan University. My buddy went there. I remember at the end of the night, it was like three in the morning. I was really drunk. And I remember they're like, oh, we got to watch out for the cops. And there was, I'm not even kidding. And we're going to cover this movie in like a couple months. But I was like, oh my God, RoboCop. And the guy looked at me like, hey, are you drunk? And then I just ran. You're talking about like college security? Yeah. But he was I, on a Segway. Yeah. Rowan, I, Rowan University. I think, I think college security is on the same level as mall cop. I oh. think they, I think they use their power. Like they, they feel like, you know, their power is, is ultimate They And I, I would say they're the same kind of person. Cause I, I know the art, our, our college security was the same kind of thing. He thought he was like, you know, he carried a badge and he was like all serious about the job. I think, you know what? I think they're on the same playing field. And when he got fired, they said, you got to turn on, turn in your badge and f- flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. So so Vic, you know, you mentioned before that Kevin James, you know, his stand up. I haven't seen his stand up. I want well, to see some of it, but I don't never saw him in person. So like you said, his stand up like translated into the movie. Yep. It was pretty cool. Like you guys listened to last week's episode because there's some great great stories. Like Kevin and Vic like started up together at the same time and Kevin admired Vic's stand up, so that's why he asked him to be in the movie. But he actually wrote in one of Vic's characters. He did. The belt guy. You had yep. a belt guy? You had a belt guy? Yeah. You had a belt guy? And it, that, that belt comes in handy later on. It does come in handy. You know, and I didn't put two and two together at first. But then I realized that they had a movie, which, you know, we're not going to spoil. But he used that belt for something. But how surreal is that? Yeah. Like, you do this bit. 
you're a comedian. I don't know when he wrote that, but he might have been not been like as famous as he was, like being viral sensation. And like, dude, that's amazing. That's so cool. Well, you know, again, it's that's the Italian thing. You know, every Italian has a guy for something. Yeah. You know, you know, you got a guy for this, you got a guy for that. And you know, when Vic does that stand up, you know, that routine, it's awesome. You know, it it fits his personality the way he talks. And um I think he said that that's why Kevin James put him in the movie. Because of he hurt, he started stand up in his 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 YouTube videos. Yeah, um, and he sort of that that's a, and he made that role for Vic, which is so cool. Now, do you have a guy? Um, I don't have a guy because I don't want you know. But I my father has a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so does your father allow you to use his guy? Um, I've used his guy before. Okay. <laughs> this reminds me of uh, analyze uh, this. Yes. At the end, he goes taking care of the first thing or the second thing. Thing are we talking about? You know, <laughs> yeah. A mental note. Analyze that. I have a tape already. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start emailing people. So it was really <laughs> cool. Like they went to that little like convention with all the weapons and stuff, and uh, they had some pretty cool stuff. There was a lot of stuff that could, you know, don't want to get political, but safe for us. You know, they had like the beanbag gun, which comes in later in the film. But dude, that glue <laughs> lob gun is. I, I think that's so cool. That would be like a really awesome thing to see. But is it really safe like shooting that in the mall or, or in a convention center where people are walking around and they have that gun just sent out there like shooting at targets? Like, is that safe? Oh, that was not safe. <laughs> that was not. That was like giving, you know, like the beanbag game at a carnival. Like that could go, do some serious damage, but it's not like you have it open behind there. There's right. nobody behind right. there. And you have walls. Here was like, it was like, it was a wall, but no, like, sidewalls. Yeah. So, really, I mean, and considering the aim that Paul Blart has with that, that really could have killed anybody. I know. I love the head security of the hotel was super jealous of Blart, which was amazing <laughs> because there were two, you know, good-looking people. And yeah. he was so jealous of Blart. Blart couldn't hit the, hit the targets with the beanbag gun. That guy does it, like, not even looking. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Well, I guess he heard about Paul Blart, you know, saving a day back, you know, at the mall. So he's a hero. And, he's a national hero. And what's the deal with uh, his the, his cousin in the movie? Um, what's his name? The the guy that the other Gutterbuck. Yeah. What's his hair? Dude, I don't. I I, I just like my daughter and I were just laughing all the time. Like I just couldn't like you know like I mean I don't think it was a need to really have ridiculous hair like that, but I just don't understand what they were going for. I don't know. They're trying to make him look. I don't know. It, it, he was ridiculous. I love. He's a really funny guy too. No, and his wife was um, from Saturday Night Live. In a gas tire. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. dude, she's awesome. I have some. I have notes written down. Like I have her lines from like one scene that are so awesome. So I want to talk about the boy that Bart's daughter is seeing. Okay. So this guy, he's a total loser. Like absolute loser. So. If that guy was like seeing my daughter, I'd be like, you know, go to UCLA anywhere that that guy's not. Because he goes, my parents supported me when I got my GED, even when it took three times. Three times. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like if I was there, I'd be like, you know what? This guy might slip one past the goalie if we hook up. And then I have that brain dead kid in me. And it's awkward. Yeah. No, yeah. And honestly, I expected a different storyline with that kid. I I was thinking he was part of like the whole thing and setting up. Like I, I thought he, I didn't think he was really into the girl, you know, cause she's kind of dorky also, you know, and he, and I, I just didn't see that. I thought he was playing her and, you know, he was like undercover for like the bad guys. That would have been a hell of a twist. That's what I thought, but nope. Well, don't spoil. Maybe. Oh, that's true. I could be lying. <laughs> <laughs> and then Blart, who's like, dude, you got to think he's famous for like this big mall. Like he saved this mall. All these people were in there. His daughter's missing for what two minutes, <laughs> and he calls the cops. The cops are questioning, and then, and his daughter calls the room. You know, the 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 Spanish guy that's into the girl, the hotel manager comes there. He's like, oh, I have the best team. They're on it, and then. She calls and she's fine. Shouldn't he get in trouble for like filing a false police report? A hundred percent. And I, I was actually laughing though because his face when he get, picked up the phone and it was his daughter and he's trying <laughs> yeah. to talk very low and like you know he was like I, like he knew he was just like how am I going to get out of this kind of thing like 
I, I was actually laughing. But yes, he should be in total trouble. He they took him what they had like six guys up there. Oh, like, yeah. And as the security guy says, listen, I don't have time for this nonsense. You know, again, she's gone for what? How long? Two hours, an hour? I mean, like I know. Yeah. But don't forget, he's uh, he's a loser who, you know, he his his daughter's his world and you know, it's like it's like those moms that can't let their sons go. You know, that's what it is. You know, so uh yeah, he's a uh, but she, you know what? She finally had it. Had it. She was annoyed, and that's when he goes outside um, and just get his thoughts together before he meets the bird. Oh, but just before that, I have to mention: Hey, everybody that's listening, we all know you want to go to UCLA, but if you're in Jersey, you had to make sure you go to. I think it was like the Central Jersey like Technical Institute or something. I don't know. It was like something so ridiculous, and I'm like, wait, your daughter has a chance to go to UCLA, and you want her to go to like some dingy school? Named after Central Jersey, which most of the country doesn't believe there's Central Jersey. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and it was, it was funny the way he pronounced the the college because he used the letters in the in the name. Yeah. It's, it's like five letters, but he did the same thing as UCLA. So yeah. And yeah. she she goes, "You can come visit," and he says, "Yeah, sure. If I want smog on my earthquake flakes." Yeah, because Jersey is nice and clean. Yeah, I know <laughs> all the trash that comes in there. <laughs> <laughs> so then Anna, you mentioned before Anna Gastar. So after he's so deflated and he is like stalking his daughter outside, he runs into Anna Gastire and Gary Valentine and they're talking about how depressed they were after their kids left for college. She's like, Oh my God, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have known what to do without you. And she, he's like, I know I wouldn't be anything without you. And then I love how she's so drunk and she kept, keeps asking Oh, I can't wait to meet your wife. Yeah. Even though he like explains mid conversation. Yeah, we got we're not together anymore. I'm single. And she's like, I can't wait to meet her later. Yeah, she, she kept ignoring that entire conversation. <laughs> oh man. And then he's wandering around. He stumbles upon Nikki Totoro, hit hammered, hitting on Adam Sandler's wife in the bar. She, she yeah, she's in all his movies too. You know. But yeah, he and uh, no, this this is this before he's out, right? The Toro's out. Like he's still up. He's still he just hammered. No, he passes out during uh, that because he's like, "Hey, I'm here to stop a situation." He's just trying to hit on a pretty lady. Right. Uh, okay. I think there's miscommunications. Uh, he's like, "I've been doing this in a while." He is not intoxicated, and then <laughs> whoop, yep. smacks on the floor, and then he has to do the speech. He is in charge of the speech, and then. Wait, the speech is before or after the bird? You no, know, the speech was afterwards. You know what I'm saying oh, okay. he finds out he has to do the speech. I got you. So then he's like, I have to go outside, get some air, because he's trying to call his daughter and she didn't answer. You know, he's trying to calm down, so he's trying to get ready for the speech. Yeah. Dude, uh, that scene with the emo. First of all, what was that area? Like you have like a guy who's all alone playing piano. Who is he playing for? Who is he who is he playing for? And it's a small area. It wasn't like a big area. And he was and he was playing like nonstop. Like I, I don't like that was weird. It reminded me of like in a movie that like if somebody died, they were in heaven. <laughs> and he like did like a nod, like, I know you. That was just porn heaven? That I don't think that was porn. I don't think porn would be in porn. Maybe porn stash heaven. Okay. But yeah. I don't think he's in porn heaven. That is true. That's only me Paul's three. All right. <laughs> but no, and then the piano player is playing while Paul Blart gets attacked by this random emu and he's like smiling and playing and just watching him. It's just- he ignored, like he didn't miss a beat. Like, you know, I mean, I don't know how tough emus really are. I don't know if there's like, you know, they put up a battle like that. Wait, wait, I'm, you're not an emu. I'm not, I'm not an emu. Um, I'm a piano, p- piano player, you know, oh, yeah. expert. Yeah. Good. So I'm saying if I was playing piano, you know, a classical piece like he was, and I'm watching a guy, have a brawl it wasn't even like a, like an attack it was a brawl it was a brawl with an emu i think that's something i've never seen before I, I would be distracted this guy did not miss a beat he was just playing like it was almost like background music to the fight yeah <laughs> i was dying because every time I'm like is this guy gonna do something and he was just snap just hanging out there i love blart's daughter was at some like random party and the guy was like the kid was like yeah all the all the maids are cool with me. So they let me know when the high rollers leave. It's like, really? They would let you come in here, trash a room. So they have to clean more. Yeah. This just didn't make any sense. And then she, while she's listening to the voicemail from her dad, she witnesses the bad guys preparing to kill a guy, which I don't know if that guy died. He had the gun to his chest. Yeah. That was uh. so they were at the same party. Is that like, 
those guys are the same party? No, they were just like, it was weird. It was like the rooms connected somehow. See, that, that's where I got confused because she walked outside of the, I mean, it looked like she a wasn't big, in a hallway. She wasn't in like a hotel yeah. hallway. So they were connected somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little confused with that. Wouldn't the high rollers have their own bathroom? Why would they share a bathroom? This isn't like a college like frat house. Yeah, it's not. I don't think. So. I hope not. They're high rollers. They should get their own toilets. But no, I best. I love when the Blart talks to the bad guy and he says, "I'm." He's like the bad guy who's a great bad guy. He said so many awesome things. He goes against a rock in Walking Tall. He's yeah, the guy that like, oh dude, beats the crap out of the. That's a good movie. That's a great movie. So. So he goes, who is this? And he goes, I'm Paul Blar, the West Pavilion Mall. West Orange Pavilion Mall. Who am I speaking with? And the guy goes, no. And he goes, hey, I told you my name. That's not fair. <laughs> well, I don't think he has a lot of uh, experience uh, talking to bad guys, uh, negotiating, or, you know, uh, because he does give them every information possible. Oh, I know. And that's what the guy said. He goes, so thank you. You gave me everything I needed, you know, whatever. And he does that more than once. You know, he just, he just you know, he can't help himself. Now, this is the part of the action movie where there's the adversity. He didn't have enough sugar, so he passes out. Like, face plants, skids on the ground. Like, dude, he does all his own. I bet you there's no stuntman for him. Seriously, so he does wait. a lot of his own stunts. Oh, you ever watch his show? He's constantly falling. I and know, falling. but, like, there's some – that that's pretty serious how hard he falls. No, 100%. He, well, the only stunt I would question on, and we get it to later on, is when he's doing the zip lining. Oh, like, I don't think he that, does that. Because he – he is a big guy to be on that zip line without being strapped in. Like he's just holding his full body weight on the zip, zip line, but we're not there yet. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this is like the scene. He's like army crawling to the dripping ice cream, like the strawberry ice cream. He's like army crawling. He like just gets it. He gets a little in his mouth and he's like, he's like hydrated. He's like alive. Like that is like his spinach. If he was Popeye. I, I thought that scene was a little gross, to be honest. It was disgusting. It was really gross. But yes, he somehow the five drops that landed inside his mouth, because they landed on his nose, his face, his cheek, his eyes. Um, but those five drops gave him the energy he needed. Now, again, he is a big guy, um, but that was enough. That's all he needed. And he was ready to go. He, he was so good. And then he gets into the room, which somehow he knew exactly. Oh, no, that's when he goes to the, the desk. And he goes, I need to know who's in the high roller suite, like in the presidential suite. And then the, the woman, the hotel manager's like, oh, I'll help you over here. And then he's like, honey, I invented that line. I know about the boyfriend line. And your, and your lip is sweating. And she's like touching her lip. And she's like, I can tell you who it is. So then he goes into that suite and knows the bathroom that his daughter was in. And punches I, it. This was the funniest scene, I think, in the whole movie. I, 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 was, I was dying. Yes. It, it is a very funny scene. And let me tell you something. She's like the nicest old lady in the world. You know, she was like, she was okay with it. First of all, she had to be pretty tough because he nails her hard in the stomach, knocks her wind out, knocks her down. And she's a frail old lady. Um, she still wants to t- take his bed, you know, turn his blanket down. Do you want turn down service? <laughs> I mean, she, and she was like, she was like, you know, apologizing to him. Like, I'm sorry, I, you know, I should, you know, I was cracking up. It was, oh, no, it, that was a great scene. And then he goes downstairs, he steals a Segway with a paper clip. So I don't know if Segway was cool with that, but is it that easy to steal one of those? Well, he stole it because he had candy or it was a chocolate or chocolate. He had oh, Hershey Kiss that he also had to show that he had to eat. Like he had the chocolate. He had to, and first of all, he's unraveling it very slowly. Like, was that f- like purposely for the the rapper that it couldn't be creased as much or he didn't want to ruin her kiss. Like that was a very dramatic scene. I know you thought he was going to like have to do something with like the metal, the, the yeah. aluminum in the cover. Yeah. I know. <laughs> then he takes a segue down to shipping and we get introduced to Myrtle, which I die when he called it turtle. But when the guy eats the black banana at his face, he's like, you shouldn't eat that. And when he starts, when he puts the, like almost rotten banana in his mouth and Blart like throws up in his mouth. Oh my God. Oh, that was a gross scene. And the fact that he, he couldn't even pronounce Myrtle. Remember when he, when he said, when he said his name? Um, yeah, that was disgusting. Like what was the like, I'm from the internal affairs of shipping. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, boss Rutten. Do you know who that is? No. So anybody listening, 
I'll make Jamie watch after his boss and he was like a former like fighter. I don't know if he fought in the UFC. But. Oh wait, wait, wait! That's the guy that's on. It was on his new show. He's like the shaved head. He was. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here comes the boom. Yeah, yeah. He was. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, he has a great viral video which Vic should should appreciate. And Vic talked about him, but he has a video that's really funny because he talks about like defending yourself, uh, but just the, with his the accent, the way he says yep. things is funny. But he comes in, he has the gun, he starts like shooting at him, and then Blart stuffs himself inside of a bulletproof suitcase, pushes himself down the stairs to pretty much like barely hit Boss Rutten, and then go right into the pool. Now, I have trouble fitting clothes in a suitcase that size. There's no way Paul Blart, and he looked like he had a lot of room in there. Like, it wasn't like he was like, you know, you ever see these like, um, what are they called? When the, 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 the people, the contortionist. Yeah. They go in these like shows, like America's Got Talent. You see them come out of the box. Like, they're twisted. They're all twisted and, and like angled so they can fit in there. Paul Blart was sitting there with his knees up. Like, he was just sitting like in his suitcase. How is he going to fit in there? I could probably not fit Kevin James in my closet, <laughs> let alone a suitcase that was like up to a hip. And again, we're not saying he's big or anything. We, we don't know what the proper terminology is, but uh, he, yeah, he can't fit in a closet or a uh, suitcase. <laughs> I think it's just that. But anyway, so, and then the, my favorite, one of my favorite scenes in the movie, and it seems like he does this in a lot of his movies, he like busts into like a... He, the glass? No, into the Cirque de Soleil type show. After he's getting chased by a guy with a gun because he knows that the kid is too young to become a mall cop and the buttons weren't the right way in the shoot. Is that really like every mall, like Menlo Park Mall in Edison and... You know, the one with Levity Live, the one by you. Yep. Like those, yeah, like those malls really care about the buttons that these old geezers that sleep on park benches, like, wear? Um, well, probably the malls that have uh, Segways. They, <laughs> yeah. you know, so they take it a little bit more serious. Yeah, Segway malls, higher standard. But no, <laughs> so when he's at the Sergei Soleil, he avoids being shot, and of course he flies, which he does in a lot of the movies. In Zookeeper, he does a yep. flying scene. Yep. So maybe he enjoys that. And I, again, I think you go back to what you said before. I think that was his um, all him. I think that was his no stunt double, you know, double. I think he did all the action there. Really? I, it looked like it. I mean, uh, yeah. And he, he put himself in the middle of a, a show that, the, first of all, the show kept going on. Now, you know. The one we, girl was questioning it the whole time. Goes, everyone boys. else. Everyone else ignored him like he's part of the show. The one girl would be like, who is this guy? Like, what? And he was just knocking everybody around. Was it now? Was it accidentally, or was he doing it on purpose? Ooh, I don't know. But every security guard was there. I guess right. they had free comp tickets. Maybe <laughs> mini. Oh, because mini kits was on at the same time. They had to get a free show. But no. The, so, Blart he shoots the bad guy. He's hiding in that room, the prop room. Shoots the bad guy with like a Robin Hood bow and arrow with a fork on the end. His vibrating fork, which they really didn't use. They should have had it vibrating, like. Like right. one time in the chest, like causing damage. And then he's in the elevator with mini kits. And this is where I wrote down because you have to mention it more than once because the guy's an old asshole. Uh, Gene Simmons is probably so pissed off. He probably gets alerts for anything that Kiss is involved in. Well, you're assuming he's not getting a piece of this either. I'm sure he got something. So think about that. But even before that, when you talk about him shooting an arrow, so you're, have you ever shot like an arrow, like with a bow and arrow? Oh, yeah. It's not easy. You know, it's oh, no, it's not at all. Okay. So before, he's standing, what, five feet in front of the, the target with the yeah. sandbag thing, and he couldn't hit one? Yet he somehow could take a fork on a bow and arrow and shoot a guy. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not a, again, I'm not a bow and arrow expert, you know, but I'm going to say that's probably, probably pretty tough. Oh, I thought you were. Let me cross that off your list <laughs> next week. <laughs> you know what? One thing in the elevator with Mini Kiss, and I think you'll agree with this. All Kiss cover bands should cover Beth. 100%. Dude. First of all, I'm Peter not a – Chris needs some love. I'm not a Kiss fan, and I think I only, only know three songs, and Beth is one of them. So that's I probably goes – three songs. Well, God I don't want to – Rock and Roll to You, Detroit Rock City, Beth. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lick it up. Lick it okay, up. Okay, four. Got it out loud. All right, I know more than them. I'm not, <laughs> this isn't a kiss podcast. But tune in next week because we're searching to it. I'm just kidding. So no, so the weird thing about the movie, and maybe you caught it earlier, 
But why an hour into the movie? We're at a minute 106. Or no, I'm sorry, minute 66. We find out that the bad guy is allergic to oatmeal. Is that is that really the first time? Yes, it is. God, they could have introduced it earlier. Like the bad guy's like henchman gives him like oatmeal. He's like, oh, you yeah. know I'm deathly allergic. Like minute 15, but we find out at an hour and six minutes. And, and, and you know, flash forward, we're not, we don't have to go too detailed, but it's a major allergy based on what it does to him. Oh, I know, but like you knew it was going to come yeah. up because it was yeah. like, no, of course, you're going to give me an oatmeal cookie. Yeah. And this one, Blark gets badass. He oh. grabs a sandbag gun. And this is where I wish he used real gun. Well, he asked, first of all, he has his uniform on, you know, right at this point because he did a speech. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this he becomes total badass. Uh, is this before the, the hallway? Is this like we're getting to the hallway scene, the fight scene? We're almost there, yeah. Okay. No, we're right there, yeah. Well, no, wasn't the bird involved again with one of the security guards? He leaves he, the bird. He leaves. He, he, the guy was chasing him, and Paul Blart ran through the bird area and locked the guy out. And the birds are attacking him, and you see the shadow of the bird. Oh, the umu! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. You know, my one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie is when the Maya is talking to her like boyfriend, that loser G D kid. And she's like, I can't leave my dad after all this. I got to make sure that if I survive this, I don't go to UCLA and I go to Central Jersey Polytech. And then she's like, my dad sleeps with the nightlight. And the bad guy barges in. And he goes, he he basically calls him a loser. (laughs) And the best is like Blart defending it. And he's like, well, you know what? Uh, You know, sometimes at night, you know, I make sure I need everything he threw at him. He had like a reason why he did it. Like he didn't realize that the guy's making fun of him. He's actually defend, like he's explaining why he does what he does. Yeah. That's what a total loser would do. Like he's not, he's not seeing through it. And the fight is awesome. The security guard versus like henchman brawl. Like I, when I talked to Vic, like he told me that boss Rutten basically told him like, you could really hit me. That's awesome. And dude, that guy's so badass. And like, yeah. and the whole thing was pretty intense. You had that one, the one girl like that's going to throw a flying kick, run into Lonnie Love. She falls into the ground. The, well, the Indian she, guy that's basically sleeping the whole time. Well, that guy's a weirdo. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who he was. He's always like that. And he's got a cape on. Like he was just, he was a bizarre character in that movie. Um, but Lon, she, Lon, she was like, she was the MVP. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, she beat up about five guys there. Threw them around like they were nothing. No one could penetrate her. Like she was like they were bouncing off her. Like she was just like a total badass. Um, the weirdo with the cape though. That was uh, that was something else. That was ridiculous. And Blart uh, like landing oh, on they, the, Blart landing on the okay. woman and like shaking back and forth. <laughs> like it was like he was just like rubbing her like bones into the hotel floor. And then he is like, oh no, they're taking my daughter to the roof. They go to the roof. She's on the other roof, and you're like, oh, my God, what's happened? Nikki Tatura's back. And a mall cop has, like, a Gatling. Is that a Gatling gun? What is that? Yeah, but he, don't forget, he's the secure, he's like the, he's the Jason Bourne of mall cops. But even before that, I laughed at a scene that, I, I think it was during the hallway scene when he has the painting. Before, <laughs> before, before his crew comes out, and he wanted to make an exchange for his daughter for the painting, and then he throws it, like, a foot in front of him. And then he's like, he's like inching it over to the bad guy. He's like slowly kicking it. <laughs> uh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Nikki Tatura has that gun with like the anchor on it. Shoots it across. Blart goes, I'm going to go across. He gets caught in the middle on a knot, which he did. We, we didn't do that stunt. And again, he's holding on to the, the, like the handlebars or whatever of the zip line with no stretch. So like he's holding a lot of weight in the middle. That's a lot a of weight. A lot of weight. Hold. Are you saying he's large? No, I'm just saying he's big boned. You big boned, yeah. yeah. Bones weigh a lot. They do. And he's got small hands. I so. couldn't even do the monkey bars at the playground down the street right now. And that guy was like uh, probably 50 stories in the air, like hanging on. Well, I, I remember Action Park back in the day. Remember Action Park? So they used to have a Tarzan swing where, you know, a swing that you, you hold on to and you swing. Oh, across. I know it well. Now, every person that would hold it like, like Paul Blart did immediately dropped into the water because all that weight you have, your hands can hold on to it. You have to hold it like sideways like this. Yeah. So there's no way that amount of weight that he's holding is going to make it. First of all, I can't even believe it goes that far. Cause how far was that shot that he, that he landed? Oh, dude, it was so far. Like, like, like seven buildings away. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, you know, 
Um, but yeah, so he's able to get there and slide across like no problem. I did action park. I did the Tarzan swing. Let go too early. Smacked my face. See, yeah. everybody like like clapped for me that I actually came up, survived. Action Park was a total. Johnny Knoxville made a movie. I know we we're gonna watch it today. Are you? No, we were, we're gonna watch it today. Oh, okay. The trailer just looked like a jackass movie with like a story. That's, like a, that. that's exactly what it is. It's yeah. it made jackass through that Action Park eyes. We mean. went. We went. Anyway, wants to know. It's a park in new jersey and we went a few years ago and we went on some ride that was like it was like colorado river rapids it was called and dude they didn't learn their lesson from like years ago i almost hit my head on the side of a rock like on the side of the ride i almost just concussed it was that bad and i was like why don't they give people helmets like is this is this mountain creek your- is it mountain creek mountain or- Creek now yeah this is like three years ago That's like ridiculous. almost like knocking myself out Nice. Anyway, he goes across, he gets over the knot, daughter runs away from the bad guy. And then the bad guy, you think he's going to kill her. Boom. He has the gun right on the back of her head, black hair, gun on the back of your head. Paul Blart. He stole the mini kiss wig. <laughs> oh. Pretty clutch. Well, he's a, he's a thinker in, in a tight spot, you know, there, you know, and I, I think we passed it. And before we even get to the climax of the movie, there was one more scene that I laughed at. What was it? When they were talking about how crazy each one was. And Paul Ball goes, I'm crazy. He goes, no, I'm crazy. I'll cra- I'm going to throw up on you and I'll throw it at you. Or like when they were going back, you don't remember the scene they were, they were talking about. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the bad guy goes, I'm crazier than you. And I'll do that. And like, I'll take, I'll kill you and rip your arm off and shove it down your throat. You know, I'm crazy. And they were going back and forth. I thought it was a very funny scene. <laughs> I love that he was able to use a cool sticky gun. Yeah, I love that. He shot it on the guy's arm, and then he had it pointed at the bad guy, the big bad guy, and just shit the bed. Started dripping everywhere, and then Maya has like some oatmeal face cream. She rubs all over the face, beats the bad guy. She's the hero of the movie. Is is that such a thing? O- oatmeal face cream? Oh, I'm sure it is. Is okay. <laughs> People rub oatmeal on everything. I'm sure. I, I don't know. They carry it with them, but yes. Oh. Did she have a purse? Then it's awkward. If we go back and we watch the movie, she doesn't have a purse, then that's weird. And I thought it was like a lip balm. Was it like a makeup? I thought it was like I thought it was an oatmeal like lip balm. But even so, I've never seen a. I mean, I've seen a lot of people have allergies or or allergic reactions. I've never seen what happens to this guy. He's basically melted almost. Like he was getting all these boil. Like right. I mean, like I, it was. Have you ever seen a anything like that before? Like or are, are there like deep allergies that will do that to you? I went on a trip with a kid. Maybe he'll listen to this. His name is Billy Weaver. He graduated with my wife. We played golf together. I've known him my whole life. We're, he has a peanut allergy that we didn't know about, and he was like really quiet about for some reason. He always had an EpiPen. But we were at like a Waffle House, and he was like eating. And he goes, I think they cooked this in peanuts. And they asked the waitress, and then everybody's like, my throat's closing up. And they had to put the EpiPen in him, and he was fine. But it was like pretty intense. Like if we were like somewhere he didn't have that, he would have. I guess I, I guess it could be that bad. But just the way the boils were growing on his face. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I, my father has a major allergy to sesame, so he can't have any sesame or anything else. He can't watch Sesame Street. Is that reason that he can't even watch Sesame Street at all? Forget about it. Do you mean allergic to Bay Bird showing up? <laughs> my daughter would be devastated. That'd be weird. We watched the Muppets Take Manhattan today. Huge fan. Sequel, I'm going to try to uh, email for that, but dude, a lot of questionable scenes. Animal chases a girl, and Rizzo the rat kind of like sexually harasses another rat. It's kind, <laughs> of, it's kind of questionable. 33 years ago now, 35. Oh my God, dude, I'm getting old. It was that long ago. Holy crap. So anyway, so this guy has boils. <laughs> this, this definitely, this podcast took a weird turn. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just never seen it do outside damage like that. Like, that was just weird. Like, and then he, the fact that Paul Blart takes credit for it and he gets in his face and he goes, Oh, it's bad on Blart. Like, dude, your daughter saved the day. Like, I know he flew over, he caused a diversion, but he was kind of like just the sidekick. You know, he was like the Bond girl and his daughter was the, was James Bond. And wasn't that a line from Wesley Snipes? Always bet on black. Oh yeah. Oh no, no. That's a 57. Oh, was that Passenger 57? I think it was Pat- Passenger 57. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, yeah. Always bet in black. I was thinking it was Boomerang with uh, Eddie Murphy, but you're right. 
That's yeah, no, and that's I think that's where he got from. Always yeah. been on Blart. <laughs> <laughs> White man ever take always taking those jokes. <laughs> yeah, so the end of the movie, dude. The the all this is going on, and I'm sure the hotel knows what, how crazy everything's going because the you know the the security guard that's into the hotel manager is there up there. So I'm sure she, he walked you back like, Hey, there's like this situation. She slips into this like dress. She's all over Blart. And I'm like, dude, this is going to be like the scene. Yeah. But dude, it just shows. And his wife's in the movie. She plays one of the bad guys. Like she's in a few scenes, but Ooh, Kevin James, Kevin James wife. Yeah. She's barely in the movie. She's like oh. two scenes, but he, it just shows that he's a good guy. Like he's a family man because no cursing. And he didn't get the girl. Like, dude, between the first one and the second one, I take the second one. The girl in the second movie. It's- yeah, hundred percent. I and I, I I don't I don't know. I, I I was thrown through a loop. I did not expect that at all. I didn't uh, either. And then the, the head security guy who was dating her was crying. Like he 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 became like a wimp. Like he like he it was a weird thing. I, I, I almost it reminded me of like a dumb and dumber like scenario where like I know. he didn't realize what he had in front of him right here. Cause the girl is beautiful. Like she was a beautiful girl. Um, he's alone now. Like why would you not? And I think, but yeah, but he did acknowledge it though. Cause then oh, he, afterwards I know he's like, yeah, I he goes, just made a colossal mistake. Well, cause he goes, Oh, that felt good. It went after he kissed her or something like that. And he goes, I think I made a colossal mistake. So I, at least he realized it. <laughs> so you should be with him. And so then Charles went again, this, guy that let them use this hotel for the first time ever in a movie his name wasn't enough so him and his wife were in the movie and he gives them a lot of money which i wish they would have told him how much money yeah i know he's still driving a minivan yeah he brings his daughter to ucla he's driving a minivan did he drive it across the country did he <laughs> and then he gets kicked by a horse he hits on some cop that's on a horse and he gets kicked in the face when he rubs his ass and so like, so he found that woman attractive but the manager not oh i know that, I mean, because that one reminded me of like a Melissa McCarthy, kind of like the one on oh, the totally. horse, you know, which I'm, I'm waiting for that movie to happen. Melissa McCarthy and uh, Kevin James. She's in that. That woman is in Superstore with the guy that worked at the hotel. Desk. Oh, the one on the horse? Yeah, she plays like the tough, like Walmart manager. Oh, she looks it. But let me ask you. So, I mean, I've, I've never gotten kicked by a horse, um, even though I'm a horse expert. Uh, I've never been kicked by a horse, but I'm assuming the velocity of that kick that does to that big guy of Kevin James, who does what, like two flips in, into a car? Would you say he'd be dead? Like, I would think he would be dead. I would think he dead at, at worst, best. Paralyzed, like the rest of his life. Paralyzed coma. <laughs> He's like sipping through a straw. He's like at the end of uh, Very Bad Things. Oh man, he's in a chair, like you know, using a, his mouth to move around. But yeah, uh, so that spoiler is, alert: people didn't see that movie. <laughs> people, it was in a theater for like three weeks. That's you it. should see that movie. The movie's awesome, but all right, it is. It's one of those. Yeah, you got to see it. But yeah, so that's Paul Bar Two. So, uh, so Jamie, what do you think about the movie overall? All right, so again, I'm a Kevin James fan, so I really enjoy anything he's in. Um, I'm not a big Grown Ups fan of the movie Grown Ups, but I did like his parts. I think if you're a fan of Kevin James, watch the movie. I think if you're not a fan of Kevin James, you're going to hate the movie. The movie to me is basically a combination of Home Alone 3 and Die Hard. Like Die Hard like 4 or whatever. Um, that's what the movie is. He, Kevin James has a whole scene in the movie like Home Alone where he's taking on the bad guys with all his contraptions. And he's the you know, Bruce Willis character that's going away, but he's always you know, on duty. Um, I think you're not going to like it if you're not a Kevin James fan. But if you are a Kevin James fan, you know what? You hit it on the head. I think this movie is great. I love the first one, but I love when sequels like taking up a notch. And I think this is like kind of taking up. They had a great guy who was a great bad guy. They had like you know expensive items being stolen. Great fight scene. They had great supporting cast in this movie. Like they had everything that was great. So, is there anything that you could do to make it better? Um, you know, I, I, it's tough uh, because I mean I think you're taking the concept of mall cop away from the mall. You know, like you know, um, I don't know. I don't know if you could do. I mean, I think again, I, I like Kevin James. The, he he really can make anything funny. You know, he's such a you know, he can be an idiot. He's uh, 
you know, very physical. Um, you know, maybe more of the the side characters, you know, maybe more interaction with the other security guards because they all have a weird personality. I want to see more of Khan with the cape. You know, what, what, what's his deal? You know, more, more. you know, the, the Italian guy, more the, the, the Spanish guy. I want to see everybody. Uh, I think maybe more of the side characters. Yeah. I think I think I'm gonna be honest. I thought the movie is awesome. The only thing I want is maybe not for the second one because it's, I don't know if it would change it, but I have an idea for a mall cop three. And I think take like that Tucker and Dale versus evil concept. Okay. Have Paul Bart three. It'd be like Tucker and Dale and Death Wish three, like had sex. And he works at a mall in LA and he's like fighting off gangs and like let him have those scenes when he actually uses a weapon because honestly it could still be funny like just think about how great how funny is uh the one with the guy from uh sean versus the dead the cop movie with them yeah when they're just blowing people apart like i think it'd be funny with kevin james in a role like that I, yeah but a role like that or well, a role, role like but this but like, just i don't it, like you know what he, he'd oh, be like totally a tackle bird yeah. You know, he tur- he tur- or you know, you know what? Not even Tackleberry. He turns him more into like the guy from uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Yes, uh, Judge Reinhold. You know, where in the first movie he's kind of a doofus, but by the third movie he's got a tr- uh, a trunk filled with yes. machine guns and flamethrowers. Yes, I could, yeah. Then that's, I think I that'd be cool, that like to heighten the movie because, like, when I talk to you know, not only I'm bragging, but I'm kind of bragging, but I talked to <laughs> William Sadler who played Death in uh, Bogus Journey, and we talked about like sequels and like. You have to heighten it. I think if they made another one, which look at the numbers, they should. This movie made a ton yep. of money. And it's not every day he's making movies. So you have your formula that yep. works. Dude, do another Paul Blart and just heighten it. Like have him like against a gang or against a cartel, like something that is just ridiculous. Uh, well, you know what? I was, I, I was, as you're saying that, I was thinking like, all right, maybe send Paul oh, Blart yeah. overseas. And let him go. To, let him go to a cartel or something like that, like Mexico or something like that, or Colombia. Hey, Paul Blart, like, don't have his daughter in it. Be like, your daughter's in college. We had this. You just won this award for this, this great hotel in a resort in Mexico. Blah 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 blah. And then when he gets there, it's like not nice. It's crappy. Yep. Yep. And he's like, has to like again. It doesn't have to be like super overall gory. It can be like just CGI blood. But no, that'd be awesome, dude. And then, you know, uh, you asked what you could do to change it. Honestly, I think one thing I would would have done maybe is less of his daughter. You know, the daughter, wasn't she kidnapped in the first one? Or she was part of, the, she's in the first one, she was in the mall, right? She wasn't yeah. she part of, like, the, the bad guys. So she got she got taken again. Like, you know, like, it, it was too much with the daughter again. I think leave her out a little bit because she had that whole thing with the, the boyfriend. And uh, then I kind of dragged it out, I think. Let it be Paul Blart. Yeah. Now. now it's Paul Blart. Let, let him take on. Or, again, let him have a crew with him um, that, you know, take on. I think that would be better. Because I think – I don't think you got enough of these other characters because they're all, all weird, you know. Um, again, I still want to know Khan's story. Like, what the hell is his deal? He's a security guard somewhere. He's always sleeping. That would be know? great to know what Maul that he is not protecting with his sleeping and that he got an award <laughs> for it. But, yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, he's there for a reward. something for his terrible work, but uh, yeah. So that's it. That is our review of Paul Blart Two. Make sure you go back if you, this is the first time you're listening. You're like, oh my god, who are these guys? We have a bunch of awesome interviews that we did with actors. Great movie reviews, and make sure that you subscribe, review, rate us five stars. Tell your friends. And here is the trailer. We did a little bit different this week because Vic who is really busy on tour. He took the time. Usually the way the formula works, we review a movie, then interview with an actor, then review a movie, then interview an actor from that previous movie. So here's a trailer for next week's movie. Hey there. What's going down? Did you get the video? How bad is this place? Bad. It's a whole whole life I've never seen. I got your back. Set it straight. This time. It's personal. Maybe 
too late. But make a big impression. All right, so that's the movie. Dude, there's awesome action scenes. I only saw a few parts of it. I interviewed an actress who's up and coming who was in a very small scene, but she had a big part for that small scene. It was like a really awesome action scene. So check it out. Escape Plan 3 with Stallone. He actually really fights a guy, which it's not fake. It's not movie fake. He fights a guy. So make sure, again, I mentioned it before, write a review, rate us, tell your friends. Good night. Good night.